this uh, new episode of We Are 757 The Show, we got Twin in the building again for the third time. Appreciate it. <laughs> and then we got my man Hendrix. How you doing, bro? All right, how you doing, man? I'm all right, I'm all right. So, um, I wanted to do this one. Uh, Twin been talking highly of you. You know, I see you out at a lot of ODU games. I know you, I seen you some at a... Uh, the high school games, which you be more in the stands on the sideline, you don't really take the pictures. So when when did you start writing? Well, actually, I started March of 2018, two years ago. Okay. Going there, it's going on three years now, but yeah, I started March of 2018. Pretty much, I was sitting at home. I always been a sports junkie then. Yeah. Actually, my summer track coach from high school was like, I should start a sports page. So I just jumped on it and it just constantly grew yeah. and I decided to focus on the past athletes from Virginia that like that played any sport and that's what I try to focus on like all athletes from Virginia any sport but I may I'm a basketball junkie so I do a lot of basketball so you you was uh you went to Lake Taylor right yeah played yeah I played basketball ran track and I ran cross country I can't do that right. Yeah. <laughs> what uh? What was it? What was it like? What, when did you graduate? I graduated in ninety eight. Ninety eight. Yeah. Okay. So what, what was the Eastern District like then? It was pretty tough, you know. Real feisty. Mm -hmm. You had um, tough guards like Ike Richardson, Moore. You had Kenny Brown, Booger T, mm -hmm. Russell Branch, Jermaine Woods. Dexter Reed, who actually went on to play football, but he was a pretty decent basketball player. It was pretty competitive. What, what did you, what you were around when uh, what Mike Evans was the man? Well, he was a little before me, but okay. I actually got to see him play when I was an eighth grader. Okay. okay. Yeah, he was pretty tough. <laughs> <laughs> they Mike, said he Mike was better than uh, yeah. Bubba Chuck at Mike the time, Evans. right? Yeah. Mike Evans is <laughs> yeah. one of the He's one of the premier Norfolk legends. It's oh. basically written in stone, like when you talk about Mike Evans, his whole game run through the city. Yeah. So his, Mike Evans is coming on the show. I'm his, just trying to get him. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle Mike is what I call yeah, him. we can set that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need him up here. He uh he called me um when uh when uh, AJ Epps came on the show and uh, we had a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he's cool people. Yeah. Cool people. Um so uh Talk about uh, you playing all different sports. Uh, well, um, what did you decide? I actually got into running because of my high school basketball coach. He was like, if you didn't play football, to stay in shape for basketball, you had to run cross country. So I took it as if I'm going to be out here, I might as well try to be competitive and compete. So I ended up, ran, you know, cross country, you ran 3.5 miles of Mount Trash where they marked the course off. So I used to run 3.5 miles in like 19 minutes. And I ended up finishing like fifth in the district, qualifying for regionals. And then when it got basketball season, I noticed I never really got tired, so it benefited. So the cross country coach was like, "You're gonna run track." <laughs> so I ended up running track, and he had me doing anything from the 200 to a mile. But I specialized in the 800, and I ended up becoming a regional champion at 800 meters. And when I became a regional champion, I got noticed by um, Atlantic Coast Track Club coach and he asked me to run for the club and what was crazy is like, I won't go to the meeting because mm -hmm. I'm like, I ain't running no summer track. Like, I really didn't like running, but I did it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm gonna compete, I'm a competitor. So I was like, I'm gonna go ahead and compete and try to be good at it. But I actually went to the meeting and I became a All-American 800 meters over the summer. So nice. I was like, then looking back at it, it was like, hey, I won't go to that meeting. But I actually met some amazing people to this day. I still talk to, so mm -hmm. it was pretty interesting. What what uh what do you? I mean, I know when I was in high school, they, we didn't look at the track athletes as cool. What what was it like? Was it cool for you to run? Being from North, where you are you from North? Yeah, yeah. Being I mean, from North, well, did they care that you run? Or you was like, shit, I'm with it. What do you mean? I mean, well, actually, <laughs> actually. I got the recognition at the school, like on, on the morning announcement, they'll be like, Deshaun Hendricks, such and such and such and such and such and such. So, I mean, after a while, it just grew on me. But then, what really woke my eyes up about the sport of track and field is when I, he, my um, high school track coach took us to pin relays. And, you know, that's the second largest track me in the world. And I saw, like, a 
I'm like, this is a whole different level. So he was telling me how to rank. We had to run the four by four, and I was just like, coach. I said, I'm a little nervous. I said, do you mind if I just pop it off? I mean, I wanted to lead off. So he let me lead off, and he was like, if you lead off, you know you're running at a waterfall style. So that's a waterfall style. is like you got a line of runners down here and a line of runners up here. I was at the top. So he was like, you better get out and don't get spiked on because you know you were spiked. So I was like, well, maybe I don't want to lead off then. But then I said, I already said I was going to do it, so I did it. I ended up lead, and I ran my fastest time of the year. That year I ran 48 seconds. So I was like, well, maybe I got a future in track and field. So then after we went to Penn Relays, my high school track coach was like, you're a good basketball player, but he said, you're going to go to school for track. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I hear you. And that's what I actually went, ended up going to school for, track and field. That was tough. That's yeah. Tough. That's tough. Growing up, I always read the newspaper. So, like, I paid attention. Like, when I used to read the sports page, I, was, I always paid attention to what was keeping me interested in reading this article. Like, say if you was a, a reporter and you went out and covered a high school basketball game, I always paid attention to what the wording that the reporter used that was keeping me interested in wanting to read the article. So, like, I, I didn't go to college for that, but it's like, I took that and ran with it when I started this page. Like, what's gonna keep the audience wanting to um, come back and keep reading more of my work that mm -hmm. I actually write myself. So I always, I always been on a newspaper blog, like not just sports, but I read the whole newspaper every day. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I did too, especially when I was in uh, yeah. high school. Yeah. One day we was we was at the crib one day, and he was telling me he was like, other than like the social media now, Slam Magazine and the Street Smith Magazine and all those magazines was the only outlets you could see good basketball players. Yeah. Right. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't really computers and it wasn't a lot of things you could just type in and see like with YouTube so when his page came out I said that's what we is like that's our brand like he's coming out and doing the old school media type where it's write-ups you know what I'm saying and also he got a story to tell so yeah. it kind of make it interesting because he's been in the vigors of sports with track and basketball at the highest level in this area in those times in the 90s and now he get to write about it so it's kind of like he giving you the player and the coach with the media, you know what I'm saying? So, so what, made, kind of interest. what made you want to write about the players that when you played against, like doing it now? But well, right. I mean, well, you know we live in this new social media area, so uh, so it's like a lot of this new generation don't really know about the history of, of, the, of the athletes around here or sports <laughs> of Virginia, period. That's, so, that's, that's what makes them valuable to I, me. It was a kid that that's went why to Lansdale and didn't know who Percy Harvard was. I was like, are you kidding me? They're just like, I, um, <laughs> I did a little blog on um, Plexico Burrs, mm -hmm. and a kid was like, um, is that the same Plexico Burrs that shot itself? And I was like, yeah. So he was like, I never knew he was from Virginia. I went to Green Run High School. And this kid actually played basketball at Bayside High yeah. School. So it's like, with the question, with him coming at me like that, I was like, that was the whole purpose of me yeah. wanting to start this page and get this information out. Because, and then there's a lot of people that don't know athletes from Northern Virginia, the Northern Virginia area, you know, because Virginia is pretty big. Yeah, yeah. And Facts. Don't, we really only focus on the 757, 804, but like, I said, I'm gonna focus on the whole Virginia. You see what I'm saying? That's big, that's big though. That's yeah, huge. Because yeah. even like the, that's huge. the movie Remember the Titans, people don't know that's saying. Right, Alexander, Virginia. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? saying? And, yeah. and, and, you, and you, you, you cover ground too, coming from another state and learning about it early. Like, because you, you're a basketball head, yeah, though. Like, you good. played in the park. He played in the park. He used to rough me up in the park. Right. So, when I asked him about a kid, like, I coach basketball, and I asked him more about a kid and get his take on it, and I respect him more because he's been there where it was just like one gym, you had the Berkeley Center, and other than that, you weren't going to get a whole bunch of training and people just catering to you. Mm -hmm. So he knows the difference. Yeah, yeah. You got some kids, man, they won't work out. I mean, they won't play one-on-one -on -one or nothing or, or, or king of the hill, but they'll just work out and train and feel like they already arrived. <laughs> you got to get a little bit of mixture of everything. Yeah, man. I, I was always – see, I never was good at, like, training and stuff like that. Because, you know, like, doing when – I'm, when I'm playing basketball, it's more of a – I react on reaction. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When I can't do that with a cone. Like a cone is just this. Yeah. Right, you know what I mean? Exactly. That was always hard for me. So, so I was always a part. You're a game. guy. You're a game. Yeah, I, I like it. <laughs> no, you're a gamer though. You're a quick twitch guy. You you're you trying to get at people. Yeah. And, yeah. and and that's just what it is. See, but another thing that Deshaun, I'm gonna ask him a couple questions about 
like some of these kids aren't as engaged. He always tell me defensively though. Mm -hmm. Where are you at defensively? Mm -hmm. and, and you and, and if I ask him like now, right, so how many guards in your district <laughs> did you have to play defensively at all times? You couldn't take a break. How many guards in your district? At well, your it was five schools, well, seven schools back then, I say out of the seven schools, probably. Five of the schools had tough guards. See what I mean? So it's like you really can't, you know you play on Tuesdays and Fridays, you really can't take nights off. <laughs> Not in the Eastern like, District, you still can't. Like, I'm gonna honestly say like, in the Eastern District, the, the toughest guard had to be Ike Richardson. It was like, he wasn't real flashy, it was just, he was just tough and gritty. So and he like, he came at you and it was like, I got in a lot of foul trouble guarding him a lot. And then he was a real good free throw shooter. Like one night I guarded him, he finished with 25, he had 17 points on the free throw line on me. Mm. And like, the next day, like I actually asked the coach if I could take the tape home. Like I was, was real engaged with the game. So like, mm. when I'm watching, like when I watch now, I'm paying attention to the players' tendencies. Like, yeah. what can they do well? What can't they do well? So like, if I had to play against you, like I would sit and watch you. So he, you might be right-handed, but he wants to set you up with his left and get back to his strong hand every time. So it's like, I'm thinking of ways, how can I defend that and be effective to slow you down? Because like at the end of the day, me personally, I don't really feel like you can stop anybody from getting to the basket, but you can contain them. Because like, yeah. somebody like an Allen Iverson that's quick, like, <laughs> I'm gonna say out of 10 times of you guarding them, He's probably gonna get you about six times. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> with yeah. his quickness, with yeah, his yeah, type yeah. of quickness. So it's like I always paid attention to the, the tendencies of the guards that I had to play and things of that nature. If they wanted to shoot jumpers. So that was just how I play and I I love playing defense more than offense. For real. Respect, yeah. respect. Yeah. You gotta love playing. I it's one player, uh Jamal Madison. He uh, that's Oh yeah, you 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 got a lot of respect for <laughs> Jamal. <laughs> yes, man. I seen him actually seen him at the Berkeley. He's like a throwback defensive yeah. player. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chunk him all from Northview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's yeah. The, that's to keep him on the court. Yeah, Stop got a play. love a lot of love for Briante Weber. Yeah. yeah. AJ J, you know, of course. Rest you know, both of you guys like the Kent Bays more with his energy. Yeah. That's exciting to that's, people, man. That's how he Unless got. he was left handed. <laughs> <laughs> that's separating him. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So when how how do you pick who you gonna write stories about? Because I see uh It's a good one. It's a good one. Well, well, with the, um, like, honestly, like, with the way the page took off, like, I really wasn't thinking about, like, covering high school basketball. Like, I really didn't have a set plan going into this. It was just like, I'm just going to write about the past athletes. And then one thing led to another. And I have a business partner that, like, really, he's really guiding me through this whole process and you see him around um, Maceo Harrison yeah, like Maceo. Maceo. he's really he's a real good That's guy family right there I see Maceo everywhere yeah, he's, 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 <laughs> like a, he's like one of the godfathers of yeah. what's going on he's definitely yeah, like he's one of the my godfathers. connect to covering ODU basketball and like he's the one that encouraged me he was like you gotta put yourself out there so I put myself out there to cover the MEAC tournament cover mm -hmm. women married basketball so like he is the one that's been really pushing me to keep going with this thing. But um, as far as like the stories, it's just like, I could just be sitting at home with me and I'm sitting at the table and I'm thinking we talking. Yep. Just like the other day we was talking about, what was the player we was talking about from um, First Colonial? We was talking about Daryl Monroe. Daryl yeah, Monroe. Yeah, and, I, and I said, when we searched Daryl Monroe. So tough. Darryl Monroe. <laughs> I'm a freshman here to see him. Yeah, he just had different <laughs> skill set in between game and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and overseas, he obviously had IQ. Yeah. And then he researches and he pulls up a great, good deal of facts. That's crazy. That's what he do. You yeah. know, the, cra the crazy thing is that, um, man, we might have to talk after after this because I got some. I'm trying to do. I'm tr trying to okay. do some crazy. Some yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Like, I think yeah. you might be. Since I didn't know that you was like filming or uh, doing stories on like older people, I thought you were just doing it on the people current. So yeah, we gotta definitely. Yeah, I, I actually prefer the um the um past athletes. Mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. I mean we live in this microwave world now where it's like like when I was we I was growing up, we had to wait to see your highlights on the eleven o'clock news. Now as soon as the game is over, you can see your highlights. So yeah. it's like it's real different. <laughs> it's very different. So I mean 
I, you know, I'm just taking it one day at a time, and I think whatever's going to happen is going to happen. I tell Twin it all the time, like, I, I sit and brainstorm a lot, and I was like, well, how can I get it off the ground? Just like with this, he was just like, D, I got something for you. He was like, I'm going to call my man, and, and we're going to do this podcast. And I, I like the podcast, but I'm like more old school. Mm -hmm. I like, I, want, I would prefer you to read my work yeah, yeah. rather than us sitting talking about it. I understand it's a new wave, but I'm still kind of old school. I, I want to actually see who's going to take the time to, to read this. So mm -hmm. how can I keep my audience intrigued to my page where they want to keep coming back? I wonder what, wonder what he just got for me today. You see what I'm saying? I wanted, that's what I want. You what, see what, I'm saying? what was the story that hit and everybody was like, yo, because i seen uh, on your Facebook page. It's crazy. Well, <laughs> well, of course, writing about Mike. Well, I'm, I'm from Norfolk, so I noticed mm -hmm. like anything that I write about Norfolk, it gets a lot of praise and feedback. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> Norfolk, <laughs> that's crazy, but Shop that's it. Yeah, that's just how I, Norfolk. I get a lot of feedback, so I can um, finish talking to you and blog about Michael Evans, and it's gonna get about ninety likes. Mm -hmm. And see, I, I'm not even really into it for the likes. I really want to know: Are you just liking it, or are you actually taking the time to read it? You see what I'm saying? So. And I know when people comment, they're actually taking the time to read it. So I would say Mike Evans, uh, Ronald Curry, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, of course, Allen Iverson. Yeah. And then I actually, um, Kenny Brown, who played at Booger T, and another good friend of mine is Devon State, and they actually called me one day and was like, um, get dressed, um, we taking you somewhere. Shout so out D. They yeah. took me out there to the, um, Allen Iverson court ceremony when they named the um, Court the boys them. club, the oh, boys okay. club court after them mm -hmm. during the summertime, and it was like I just kind of put myself out there and I introduced myself to Gary Moore, and we develop a relationship, and we've been talking and doing things ever since. He let me come cover the Irishman tournament, mm -hmm. so I mean, one thing just led to another. So I've got good people in my circle that they they willing to back me. So yeah, those those connections, man, it's it's. You know, um, you know <laughs> another, crazy. you know another thing. Henry Sports Talk does real well too. I'm gonna name two things. He he did something the other day, and he's actually showing you about what type of flavor of apparel that they used to rock. They used to rock the armbands, the sneakers, and stuff like that. A lot of um, media outlets they're probably gonna go to a certain extent, but you do it with the socks yeah. and the apparel, so you got a little flavor on it. So everybody really don't have that. That's a good thing to have with these kids. Yeah. yeah so yeah. some some parts we don't see. It's going well with the microwave world, but we know how to relate, and he do a good job of that. He also does a rankings of his top guys. People <laughs> inbox him a lot, talking about why this, why that, but right. that's what he likes yeah. at that particular, particular time in between those lines, like how he played. Well, right. rankings now or then? Well, well from, from, from um, like I did my, you know how they had an all tie water team? Mm -hmm. Like I would do a Hendrick Sports Star all freshman team, all okay. sophomore, like, Last year I did freshman, sophomore, and juniors. Then I did my own form of all tie water team, and I got a lot of feedback. I mean, who was up there? Uh, <laughs> what from last year? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to get some uh, uh, Who was uh, who played last year? Well, um, talking about this past year, with Jaden Epps. Yeah, Epps up there. I had Jaden Epps. Donald Hand Jr. Obviously. Um, who else? <laughs> um, I had the kid from Mitchville. Um, Which one? Um, uh, Chauncey or? I had both of them. I had and Chauncey I on the first team, but then I had um, Struthers. Struthers making second team. So, and I try not to just keep it be one-sided. I try to like do stuff on the peninsula as well. But being that I'm not from the peninsula, I don't really know a whole lot about Mm -hmm. All the schools over there, so you know. But I, I still haven't filled the Denby game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went, to the, I, went, I went to the Denby game when they played. Um, was it Lake Tell in the regionals? Or oh, no, they played Deep Creek. They mm -hmm. played Deep Creek in the regionals last year. When all the year they had, what's the kid that went to Virginia State? Oh, uh, yeah, the Bucks Bucks, 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 the Bucks. Bucks senior year, yeah, I went out there and covered okay, that game. Denby. Yeah. yeah, you did call me and tell me about that over there. Yeah. That's 100% facts he did. He yeah. covered around, man. And the sports talk around. Yeah, and then I try to, like, kind of keep it urban. Like, I try to have my head in, like, like a song related. I try to, like, exactly. 
Exactly. Relate like to the hip hop um, world. Yeah, I try to stay hip to what the new generation, so to keep them intrigued to these old school athletes as well. So I try to use like hip hop headings and things of that nature to keep you interested. Yeah, I like those. That's, that's I like some of you, some of like Nas lyrics, some <laughs> Jay Z lyrics. You did yeah. one with uh, World Wide West. And World Wide West just got a job with the Knicks too, not too long ago. Yeah. So he's basically, like, he's on it. Like, he's around, like, knowing what's going on. Like, he knows, like, we did it, we watched it, the, the Christian Dawkins AAU situation. Like, he can write about that, and ain't no other outlet really gonna look towards to go that direction, but he will. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, it makes a lot, a lot of different avenues, a lot of different topics. Yeah. Wait, did you, um, I know when I first started uh, doing media in the area, did you ever, like run into any walls or anything like that? Like I mean, someone stopped you from coming in or anything? Well, actually, the crazy part about it is like when I started covering the high school games, what I did is I would reach out to the athletic director mm -hmm. during the daytime and explain to them who I was, that I was an independent blog and I was interested in coming to cover their game. Okay. So that's how I went about trying to get into the high school venues. And then I noticed like after a while, it just, I would just show my pads and they just let me right on there. So they started seeing me around and I noticed the more and more I got out, people started knowing who I was. And then it was like, like this, this past year with the me act, they changed the person who was responsible for the credentials. So I got denied, but then, you know, the me act tournament got canceled too. So, I mean, but I've had too many issues. I really want to get my um, VHSL pass so I can cover the state tournament games yeah, though, because you know they say the um, passes don't work. It's different, for, yeah, for mm -hmm. me, somebody like me. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a whole other beast right yeah. there. But they, they, I mean, they, they pretty cool. I think you just gotta go on the website and uh, and uh, or know somebody. Yeah, I think knowing somebody is right is is better. Well, I mean, I like I pay attention to the other media outlets and I take a little bit from each one, but the biggest thing I've learned is like, I just gotta keep keep going and putting myself out there, showing my face, letting people know what I do, because like I'm also using the sports space to bring awareness to motor neuron disease. I was diagnosed with a motor neuron disease at 15 years old, right, right, right now right. governor of Virginia, Ralph Northern, and from 15 until I graduated from high school, I would have to go see that man at least twice a week for the next four years of my life. So he gave me a lot of research on different type of motor neuron diseases and basically it's a disease of nerves that are responsible for controlling the voluntary muscles in our fingers and sending signals from the brain so that we, our fingers and hands can, can operate like that. So for whatever reason, the voluntary muscles just decided to stop working with me. So I'm um, also using the page to bring awareness to that. And um, I mean, I'm just, gonna we'll see where it takes me. But my biggest thing is getting that literature out there, bringing awareness to it, and, and doing more research to try to find a cure for it. Did, did, you, uh, did it ever affect you when playing sports growing up? Well, not in high school, but when I got to college, I actually had a real bad fall. And you know how when you fall and you try to catch yourself? Mm -hmm. And my right arm bent all the way back. So it's like, I feel that it, it damaged it more and it triggered it I feel like if I don't, if I don't had that accident, I don't think it would have spread it into the other, to my other hand. Mm -hmm. But I really feel like with me having that accident, it triggered it more. But when I got to college, I was wearing a brace and I played point by. So yeah, it did affect me. But I was left-handed, so mm -hmm. how I would do is like I figured a way out. Like I'm gonna set you up, but I'm gonna get. I gotta get back to my strong hand because I don't have a lot of strength in my right hand. Mm -hmm. So, but after a while, it got discouraging. And you know, I ended up leaving, coming back here, and then it started getting worse. And my, my mom was like, I can't help you all the way out there in Maryland. So I came back home mm. and been back ever since. <laughs> that's my guy, that's my guy. That's why we're we gonna fight the good fight. Yeah. And uh, we definitely gonna get together after this and try to keep these good media outlets going and talking about different things. Me and you, he's also said it. Basically, this awareness thing can grow with more like people coming in for certain games. Like another thing, I'm about to get him to explain. Dodo mom called him last year for Dorian Finney Smith little weekend thing mm -hmm. that he always does, the charity that he gives back. And when he kind of got that situation in the system, 
we knew that we had to step up and do something like that eventually too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because those type of giving backs and awarenesses count. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you got donors and sponsors starting to grow. So, um, how you feel about doing that thing for um, Desiree Finney Smith? Well, I guess yeah, she called me and was like, she um, was in tune to the page too. She was like, you know a lot about the, um, the athletes right here. She wanted me to come commentate the um, basketball, the charity basketball game that they had had or whatever with the former players, college mm -hmm. players. So. I went and did that. That was real neat. So, my business partner, we put together a kickball game on Thanksgiving right. mm -hmm. to bring awareness to my disease. And I had the first kickball game this past Thanksgiving, and it was real successful. And we decided we're going to try to do that every Thanksgiving, have a kickball game mm -hmm. to bring awareness to um, motor neuron diseases. Right. What? What? Uh, it was. Um, what was the turnout like for that? Well, I had two games. Um, I ended up speaking, um, Maceo spoke, and um, the coach from Lake, there was a couple of coaches out there. My former high school coach came out there and supported me. Coach Brown from Lake Teller, Coach Yogi, Coach Tyran Matthews, so it was a pretty decent event. Did y'all team win? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did take home. We did bring home the trophy. We sure did, yep. Yeah. But yeah, that's um, crazy. I never, I never, I never heard of this. Um, yeah, that's the thing. A lot of people never heard of it. And like, what's crazy is like, I just woke up one day, and I'm left-handed, but I did a lot of stuff with my right hand. And you know, back in the day, we had the old school TVs where you had to turn the TV on no. with your hand. Mm -hmm. So I went to go turn the TV on one morning, and I noticed like, I had a difficult time doing it. I didn't really think too much of it that day, but then as time kept going, I noticed it. It's, my hand started feeling different, so I told my mom. She took me to the doctor, and it was like, you need to see a neurologist. So that's when I met um, Ralph Northern, mm -hmm. and he gave me a whole bunch of literature on what was going on. So I actually took the time to read it, and like I do research on it every day. Like I'm constantly on, on Google looking for different things because it's a very rare disease. It's not even seen in, in America, and it's more common in males than it is females. Mm -hmm. So, and they say that the disease is mainly seen in Asia and Japan. Okay. So, I mean, with people like Twin, Maceo, I just keep positive people around because we was talking yesterday how like have reserve and quiet down. So it's like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. her situation kind of changed me, uh -huh. but I mean, with the way the world is today, it's kind of good to be quiet sometimes. But I know what with the filler work that I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to go, I know I'm going to have to open up and talk more, but like, I'm not going to sit here and lie, like, the situation has changed me a whole lot to where like, I don't, like, I, I'm, I became more of a homebody. Mm -hmm. And like, I go to sporting events, but like just hanging out, going to bars and things like that, not really into it too much anymore. So like, it did change me to the point where like, as far as my social life, I can't say that, but I mean, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I mean. Yeah, I've, I've always been a homebody. I mean, just uh, like even just doing this podcast, this ain't me. Like right. I failed public speaking <laughs> right. like three times right. in college. I just what you made one when you first came. Yeah, yeah. And uh, people start people start watching it, so I was like, I guess you know I'm gonna that's continue right. to do yeah. it as much as people start. Much as I'm, people I'm gonna basically say this too, because watching you play at Tallwood, you was. You was left handed just like mm -hmm. D. And you was you like and and it's like you played with other good players, so have D. And y'all both kinda had that quiet reserve, but when them bright lights come on it's time to perform, you kinda show your worth though. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with having another person around you that'll speak a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm gonna always do that for you guys. But you know what I'm saying? Like his his persona is what he is when it comes to on the court and off the court. And he does those things well. Like he say he researched that's like he do his research for the disease. He do the research for his work, you know what I'm saying? The sports page. Same thing like kind of with you, like, it's like I want to ask both of y'all, like, so <laughs> if y'all make a comment, you hear, normally now these days, yeah. you hear parents and people say, man, why you say that about my child? Why you say this? But he told me, back in the day, we didn't even really, I, I, me neither, we didn't even have parents coming to the games like that. Right, exactly. We didn't even have parents coming to the game to check on us. So it wasn't the opinion of a parent. Yeah. So I want to ask both, you can go first and you can go second, but do you think, the parents have took some of the competitive grittiness nature from this area because you don't really see that in other areas. I wouldn't say, I would say, uh, 
with social media, I would just say a lot. Everybody is more involved. You get hit or up. Or trying to be more involved. You get hit up by saying why they didn't do a mixtape for me. All the time. And he get why didn't write about this or do it. Coach, they ask time, you sometimes. Deshaun said, "Why you didn't talk about me? Or why didn't you say this sometimes in some of your, your blogs and your posts?" Yeah, get it all the time. Yeah, I mean, but I feel like uh, a lot of people don't understand that when you working for yourself or building your own brand for yourself. Exactly. exactly. You ain't pay, you can't pay yourself like right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. Exactly, bro. It's like so. I'm, exactly, bro. I'm putting the time in that's gone. That's gonna build my brand as much as possible. <laughs> but if you want me to do something for you, you gotta pay me. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying I'm not gonna write a great story on you just because you pay me, but you gotta pay me to pay attention. You know what I mean? Like, right. it, it, it's 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 kind of so, hard because you want to show everybody love, but right. you got people gotta understand that if you taking the time out to do something for someone else, right. You know what I'm saying? Because like, he reserved, and if I said do something, we're, we're talking about doing something on Michael Evans. I feel like he should do it, but you know, somebody gonna probably be like, well, why you ain't do it with me? This is another thing that I'm gonna put out there that he's gonna answer. How was your time spending with your good friend, which is an NFL guy, Ron Yell Whitaker? He's been around the, the creme de la creme of all these guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way, How about your time with Ron Yell Whitaker? The way I look at it when it comes to the, uh, the, the first question you ask is, I'm starting to learn that I'm considered media, so I'm considered a media guy now. So I've also, I'm starting to look at it like you can't please everybody out here. Right, right. I'm, and then everybody's not gonna like you, no matter how positive I try to stay with it. Somebody's gonna come and say, blah 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 blah. You ain't do this. You ain't do that. Okay, mm -hmm. I get it now. So it's like I have to learn to turn the other cheek. To just like I'm not really into the debating. So it's like if you. If you was to follow, I do a lot of posting on um, Facebook more so mm -hmm. than I do on um, Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, yeah, but on Facebook, I'm not really into the debating. So like, if I do ask a question, I'm just gonna pay attention to the comments. But I'm not gonna give Comment you any back. feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got you. Now this is way. something that really catches me. <laughs> but like, I'm not really into the debating, and I try to stay as positive as possible. But I mean, just like the um. Last year with the Maury, I think it was Maury Indian River football game. I believe it was a playoff game. Like, yeah. them people on that sports page talked about that football game <laughs> almost for a whole year. For real. Yeah, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> That's when it really opened my eyes. Like, yo, this stuff is just, they, these people, like, really take it to another level sometimes. Mm -hmm. And as far as the parents, I feel like some of these parents wanted more than their kids. Nowadays, I appreciate that response. I appreciate that response. And I don't really know. I can't speak for all parents. I don't really know like what the parent agenda is today. I mean, what's the reason for it? Because like nowadays, with the way the world we live in today is like these college coaches are gonna, the first thing they're going to do is get on their device and go look at the kids' social media account. Mm -hmm. So they're going to pay attention to that stuff how the parent act, and if the parent is acting crazy, there's a possibility, you know what I'm saying, the school might back off. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Most definitely. It all depends on, you know what I'm saying, what they're looking for. Most definitely. See what I'm saying? And we're going to, no, seriously, most no. definitely. And that's like I'm going to ask him another, he's been around it though, like, so I'm basically going to get him to talk about some of his times with, you talk about track and spending with another guy that had to work his butt off, which was Ron Yell Whitaker, a friend that he was cool with at Lake Tetler. And he's still cool with to this well, day. Yeah, I went to the high school with him. He played. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He played. Um, mm -hmm. Nah. Well, he was all tied with a player of the year football at Lake Teller High School. We went to school together. He played basketball. And to this day, I really feel like if he would have ran track with me, he would have had. A, I personally feel like he would have had a longer NFL career because mm -hmm. if you notice, like the D'Angelo Halls, them, like a lot of those football guys, they ran track. Mm -hmm. So I mean, track helps out yeah. a whole lot, and I learned that at a young age. I ain't now the training part of it, like that's a whole nother level. But at the end of the day, it really helped me. But as far as Ron, yeah, like good guy, decent personality, and I mean, he was a hard worker. Went to Virginia Tech, played in the national championship as a redshirt freshman. Got mm -hmm. the um, guard Peter Ward. Peter mm -hmm. Ward caught the touchdown pass on him, of course. But um, 
just watching, just seeing the NFL side of it, he took, because I told him in high school, I said, listen, man, I say, I know you're going to go pro. I said, I just want to come to one game. <laughs> I said, one college game, because I know, you know how it is when you, yeah. I just want to come to one game. So he went, he, he actually <clears throat> went undrafted and went to Tampa Bay as an undrafted free agent. I didn't make it out to Tampa, but I made it out there to um, Minnesota. He played for the Vikings. And I, when I was out there, it felt like I was in the league right. because he showed me so much love. And I'm like, well, he wasn't really a, uh, a name brand player on the team and he's around here doing what he wants so I can imagine what an Adrian Peterson can do around here in this city but I mean just seeing that side of it it showed me like how it is you know to play professional sports yeah. on a different level and I, I swung, like I stayed out there for three days I took it all in man that was the best time of my life I'm not outside of running AAU track and becoming an All-American on the high school level that was the best time of my life going out there to Minnesota. But That's tough. I mean, <laughs> these athletes today, they, I notice they they post a lot of their workouts, their training, their training. But my thing is, can you translate what you're doing in that training session over to your game and onto the basketball court? That's why I don't film training because I'll be like, that's just the clout for me. I I'm like I was talking to um, Desmond Lee. Uh, the other day, and he was like, uh, yeah. he, he was like, man, he, he was, he was like, don't, uh, don't bring the camera to the open gym. This is gonna mess it up. You know what I mean? Just because when they see that camera, they and you know why Dez doing say too something? much. You know but he was like, you know why Dez say something like that? Because he's from the gritty down here yeah. toughness. Yeah, yeah. see, he was one of my guys, him, Marky, Cub. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I asked his opinion. I said, who, you, how you feel about this kid? How you feel about that kid? I'm not here to put all that out there today, but if he tells me there's, there's a something with him, it's something with him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I remember the times that he was funny a little bit. We was around Leon Goosby in the Portsmouth side of basketball where he knew how good the kids were going to be because of the structure inside and out. Mm -hmm. You know, he was living in Portsmouth at one point. Mm -hmm. You know, he was still, you know, rock, rocking and hanging out then. Yeah, and then it's like I've, um, I, I coached junior varsity basketball at Wilson. I coached track and field at Wilson. So it's like, and a lot of people, when you look at me, a lot of people think I'm younger than what I am because I'm 42 years old, but people look at me, they don't think I'm that old. So it's like, I have been around the block a couple of times and seen a, a little bit. So it's like, from then to now, it's like, I notice like, if we, and I know you can probably attest to this too, if we had what <laughs> these kids have today, like, that's a, a lot of us would be, Making a lot of professional, money. Yeah, right. professional basketball right. players. But right, right, that, right. That, yeah, that, I mean, that's always going to come up uh, with the media now, with the way the world is now. I mean, come on, there's so many basketball players that didn't make it. Right. But if they was playing in this era, I mean. Yeah, because yeah, if, if a, if a, if a, if a uh, team loaded van or any van come pick him up from his neighborhood every day and give him an opportunity to get <laughs> Like at least the knee act or something, he gonna take that. He gonna do well at that. That's what he's saying, mm -hmm. you know. And then you still got some kids and some entourages or whatever thinking that they need more. Well, I they, need don't know, more. they don't know how easy they got it, right? right. They, oh, I yeah. need more. I need more. You just have to get to the level to where you're at. I don't, you know. It's so many. Whatever suits you. I always sometimes when I, you know, some of the closer kids that I'm closer with, I always ask. I'll be like, Hey, do you ever hit up the newspaper and be like? uh or like, hey, why the newspaper not coming to your game or anything like that? It was like, why you do it to me? Or do it to another like media guy? I was right. like, we the one showing you love. We right. here. Like, the newspaper don't do that. That's what we had to do. But And the crazy part about it is the newspaper, those reporters are only going to the big game. Yeah. But then they worried about making the newspaper but then, all state or all what's the name. But they don't worry about your brand. But want you to come to early game. You know what I mean? Right. They probably don't care about... The list that you made or top ten, but they worry about that newspaper all state. It's right. Like, but you ain't hit. You know. You know what I mean. Well, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Like growing up, like being that I've read the newspaper, I was like, dang, I can't wait till it, it's my time. Hopefully, they'll take a picture of me. Get an a picture of me and I be in the newspaper. <laughs> but it never happened. But what's crazy is like, and I go back to my track coach because my track coach will always tell me he was like. He said, you can play basketball, don't get me wrong, you can play, but he said, you're a better track runner. And I, when he was saying it to me then, it wasn't clicking to me. So then one day, 
he, he took my high school track coach, rest his soul, he said, you know what pains me, Deshaun? I said, what's that, coach? He said, you'll do whatever your basketball coach tell you to do. He said, but when I tell you to do something as far as how many 300s you're going to do, you talking back to me. He said, why? So I said, you know what, coach, you're right. So I said, I'm going to dedicate myself to the sport of track and field. And he said, I believe it when I see it. So from I went home that night, I came back to work out, and I, I changed my whole demeanor, like, how many I got to do? What's the time I got to hit? So I really dedicated myself. So it's like, that showed me like, yo, if I really put my mind to it and really do this, like, I can do it. But it was like, my whole thing was, I'm a basketball player. Like, I'm running track, but I'm still a basketball player. So it's like, what this disease has also told me is like, don't limit yourself, but it's a privilege to play sports. Cause like, mm -hmm. I kept putting all my marbles into playing basketball. Now look, I don't have full use of my hands. But my track coach was telling me the whole time back then, you're a better track runner. So it's like I was being hard-headed. So it's like any young people I come across now, I tell them don't limit yourself. Because like I worked at that same boys and girls club that you was at the other day. I worked there. So it's like I figure I'm going to get my story out one way or another and I'm going to do it my way. I don't have to have the cameras in front of me. Mm -hmm. Like, just being around the kids, like, and they, Mr. D, what, why your arm so small? So here's my time to tell my story. Mm -hmm. right, and, right. And it's like, they're young kids, but I know it's like, they're in tune and they listen because it's like, they ain't never seen nothing like this before. Like, why is his arm small like this? His arm is small like this, but he's still engaged with us. He's still having fun with us. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, that, that was my purpose of putting this, this sports place together. See how many former athletes I can bring back and see because I always started out, who remembers? Mm -hmm. Who rem like, I can do one on you, you can give me some info before we, when we, before we leave today and I'm going to go do my research on you, who remembers such and such? Like, that, that's just, I get, a, I get a rush off of seeing old newspaper articles. It may sound crazy, but like, I, I get a rush off stuff like that. That's I, just, mean, I mean, I moved here in, what, four and and you played in a good era too. You and, played in an era. I mean, you, you played in I be knowing more than people that like grown up here. And I, I, and and I don't, that's crazy. Let me get you. Let me get two seconds of your time. Look, <laughs> you was in an era in Churchland, the big Final Four Churchland mm -hmm. Eastern Region. All right, so I kind of feel good that we both left that era alongside. We can kind of piggyback on some of some of the things he had in his era, mm -hmm. like how tough the sports is. You got to be privileged to pay, to play. You can't really take it for granted. You can't go to sleep on it. If you sleep on it, somebody else will take the dream from you. Just like Coach was saying, like sometimes some kids are like, like we did what I said, rest in peace to AJ James, just that fast. So you got to harness it, grab it, and don't let nobody take it from you. Yeah. And this is why the story being told, this is why we're going to keep pushing these sports forever through these outlets with you guys. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to play a pivotal factor. That's definite. Yeah, man. I mean, I get, we get. I get a lot of comments from like a lot of people, you know, uh, to tell me like, cause you know, sometimes, you know, I got to watch what I say. It's because people listening to us yeah. And, and, yeah. and I didn't realize it because I'm not getting hundreds of thousands of views like other bigger brands, but yeah. the people here in the 757, they do listen to us. Yeah, they, they do pay listen. attention. Yeah. And I've I come to realize like on my sports page, it, it gives you a diagram of like, um, how active people are on the page, it breaks everything down for me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and I notice like, a lot of people aren't liking what I'm blogging about, but they're seeing it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you, you absolutely right. You have to watch what you say. I watch how I word things, and they be like, why did you word it like this? But like I said, I'm, I'm starting to learn that that's what, that's what comes with being, me. quote unquote, a media <laughs> guy now, so. <laughs> um. Uh, one thing I do admire, like a lot that you do, that I wish I did, uh, that you take pictures with, like every, like a lot of people you do stories yeah. on. What made you start doing that? Well, just the, I want my the people that's on the page to know that not only can I write about them, but I'm seeing these people and I'm asking them questions. You see what I'm saying? So right. it's like like an old school newspaper reporter, mm -hmm. like. And I all like I said, I always paid attention. Like I still remember the guys that did the write-ups on our games, Robin Brinkley, Paul White. So that's how in tune I was when I read the newspaper. So it's like 
I, I figure if I take a picture with them, that'll keep, because if nowadays, the picture's what's catching the person's attention because all they're doing is strolling. Mm -hmm. A lot of people aren't going to read. So I'm noticing now, like, the picture has caught their attention. So, hmm, nice picture. Let me see what he's talking about. Let me see what he really, you know what I'm saying, what he got going on. And I've noticed, like, over the the two years, like, the page has grown. Like, I got over close to 3,000 members. And then I had a kid that played football at Granby High School that went to Virginia State. He um, inboxed me and was like, I just wanted to let you know that I, you, I, he said that I inspired him because he's watched how my page grown mm -hmm. and he ended up doing a um, term paper on my sports page. He wrote about it. So I was like, wow, that's deep. So I was that's like, tough. what I really want to happen is actually happening. Mm -hmm. So I mean. Making change. Yeah. Just keep going. That, my whole thing is to keep going and just to see what happens. That's it, man. How's, uh, how's uh, the COVID-19? Uh, affected you in any way? Well, I haven't really, I um I do personal training for um the sport of track and field, so once that happened, I wasn't able to do as much training, and I also started a um, AAU basketball team through my sports page. Okay. I was coaching nine through 11 year olds, so we had just started rolling with that. So when the yeah, pandemic yeah. hit, that made me stop, you know, the basketball team stopped or whatever, but that's pretty much how it affected me. Mm. Yeah, I, I know it affected a lot of media people because of, I mean, you ain't got nothing to write about, nothing right. to talk about. But uh, I tried to keep the podcast going. Do a, yeah. I did a lot what, over over Zoom calls and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And it's been pretty good. Um, How is it affecting you? Or is uh, AU coming it's, back around? Because I know you a big I don't, AU guy. I don't think AAU is going to be as big as it is because some states got more cases. For the COVID-19, so... So they can't go to certain, like, the bigger... Right, so you got guys just doing a lot of personal training, just playing, you know, playing like you just was doing with the open run. And even college kids are down here are still doing Still open home, run. So, yeah. So um, you got you to gotta kind of go back into the old school ways now. Like we was talking about, we all can relate to this. If you um, want to stay in shape, you should take, you know, get your little... You still got to be safe, but do your little running, sit-ups, work on your game. You got to do old school. Ain't nothing wrong with dribbling the basketball all day. Yeah. You know, you still can kind of do muscle memory, so. I wanted to ask both of y'all this question. Like, I've seen you at um, private school games. I've seen you at one of his games. Mm -hmm. What do you think the difference is between private school basketball and public school? That's a good one. Uh, now, I don't think, I don't think this area, there's a, I'm not going to say it's, a big difference. I I just uh the kids, I mean you playing uh, some of the kids that you just playing against, I don't feel like I don't feel I feel like public school kids are more hungrier right. to me. But I feel like uh but when Chris Clark and them was playing mm -hmm. public private school is the way to go because you could play more games, you could play a lot they, it's more money involved in the school so they yeah. can travel more. Right. Outer state to play people just like uh what is the guy name that went to John Marshall. What's uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, yeah. I mean he could have yeah. stayed there, but who right. is he playing? Right. You know what I'm saying? So he went to the so North Carolina state. school he cut and down. he's playing right. more nationally ranked guys. So ten or ten, like ten to about twelve of his games or more against division one players, yeah. is what you're saying. So you're not gonna also, get better. Right. <laughs> he also, won the state championship. What, you just gonna keep winning the state championship at that level? Right, right. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna hit um, Deshaun with a trivia question right now too, because we both hoop dream fans. So like and hoop dreams with Arthur A. G. and William Gates, right? <laughs> Imagine this now. Somebody come to your house and knock on your mama door and say, Do you wanna go to private school or public school? How would you take the situation if you if you could? Whatever he doing this thing. It's still in the nineties, but what if, what if you had the opportunity now too though? Like that's a good little twist with it. Uh, I honestly, the type of person I was back then, I probably wouldn't have been it. Right, I right. probably would have stayed in my home school because, like, when I played junior varsity basketball, my junior varsity basketball, I played junior varsity as an eighth grader. So, gotcha. As when I got to the ninth grade. The coach was telling me, the, the coach that was at Lake Teledam was telling me, 
you're going to play varsity as a freshman. So my junior varsity coach who was on the varsity staff, he ended up getting a head coaching job at Norview. And he asked me if I would transfer over there. I thought about it, and then I was like, no, nah, I'm going to stay at my <laughs> home school. So the answer your no, nah, I probably, right. I would I would think about it, but I probably would stay at my home school. I probably went and made the jump. I feel like now a lot of the kids are doing it because they uh, they kind of like taking advantage of it. Like he, if he wanted to win, but if he wanted to like me, I wish I could have done it like to reclass my senior year just to reclass. Okay. I would only right. do it that so it could so yeah. I could take advantage of it. Right. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. And, and you're, you're right though. You, you shouldn't transfer. I'm not. If, if you if you're not gonna get any better though, like if you if you want to go and just run from a situation, you shouldn't transfer. Yeah, like Jonathan Northley ain't transferred. You see what he did right. senior year. Right. Not right. More y'all. They right. supposed to right. win right. the state championship. That and you make a lot of sense with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I agree. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I agree with you on that. I'm a big fan of if if you can play, they'll find you. But I'm also realizing that you get your offers from playing summer basketball like that's how you really get in your looks or whatever mm -hmm. so it's like you take a Jaden up like I've been paying attention to the offers he's got late and I'm like I keep hearing he's leaving for prep school he's going to prep school this that and the third but my whole thing is like you got these offers playing public school basketball but and you plan I don't know what circuit you act what circuit did he actually play on during the summer? Well, well not on the circuit I don't really know what what it was you know not having a circuit this now. year but well, last year he played with Blue, Blue. Right, right. Blue. Yeah, so they all they know his name is out there. So I mean, I can understand you want to play, play against. But he wants to play against better competition. But my whole thing is like they already know who Jaden F is around the country. You see what I'm saying? So it's like I'm just an old school type guy. I'm gonna get it done at Kings Fort. I'm gonna stay at Kings Fort. I'm gonna stay with my guys. We gonna stand in the gym and we gonna get this thing done. We gonna win a, a outright four A state title next year. Yeah. That's just me. <laughs> That's um, just me. Were you, were you on the team that went to the state championship at Lake Taylor? No, or I, before you, I, um, or after you. Do, don't do D like that. Well, <laughs> no, I, um, actually, when I started playing with Lake Taylor, the tag had just started. Like Before I started playing varsity basketball, Lake Taylor, you look at Lake Taylor on the schedule, that was an easy win. Mm. So it's like, once I got there, we got that new coach. And he changed the whole culture of the program. He was like, "We're not going to run that slow tempo offense. And they, we're going to we're going to look to run." So, my freshman year, we was competitive. We finished right at 500. My sophomore year, that's when I got to play against Phil Clear and Ryan. Where they beat us in the first round of the regionals mm -hmm. at Tallwood. We um, I think the second quarter we only scored three points. They outscored us 21 to three in the second quarter, mm -hmm. and that killed us. And that we don't know looking back from that. So my soft my sophomore year, Tallwood knocked us out. My junior year, Indian River knocked us out when they had um, Jason Capel. Mm, I heard that name. I think you was talking about Jason. Yeah, Jason. Cap like Jason Capel played. Me. He was a McDonald's All American yeah. alongside Ron Curry, and he's been in that era. Yeah. He's so we on. we um we made it to the regionals. First round of the regionals, two of my four years, and um lost to Tallwood, and then we lost to Indian River. But we never could, and you know, we had to win that game to make it to Churchland. Church. We couldn't never get to Churchland. See, Churchland was a staple. We <laughs> yeah. couldn't never get there. Man, ain't nothing. I, I felt like playing at Churchland, and yeah. I don't. I like. I like the scope, but I feel like it's too big. You don't get that Churchland feel when every seat. Well, is actually, packed. actually, Churchland is, is when every seat is packed. Yeah. That, that prepares you. Actually, I don't know. Was you here when um, Dorian finished Smith and Norcom um, played? Yeah, I live yeah. here. Uh -huh, I live here. Like. The scope was packed for that. Um, um, when they played Callum, I think yeah. they played so Callum when they had Trey Freeman. Yeah. yeah, that was a good game. Like, my personal opinion, that was the state championship game. <laughs> they beat by one. Like, it was packed and they weren't nowhere to sit. That was like, a good game. Yeah. But ever since then, it was like, it's kind of fell off. Like, like I said, they need to move the location to a. They need to move it back to Churchland, or I feel like Oscar Smith, too, because Oscar Smith is huge. Do you two feel. Like Churchland is crazy. Are you two up for. The kind of cut down in the class three, four, five. Yeah, I don't like. I, mean, I never. Let's like go that. ahead and let, like you said, like if it's gonna be four, four and five, let the Kings forks and the Green runs and all those or guys, yeah. no abuse, let those guys just go ahead and sell it. Or, or I feel you know, like even if they, 
Or I feel yeah. like they leave it, if they leave it like that, I feel like uh, they should also have like a tournament of champions or something like that. You know what I mean? That's 100 that's, 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 that's what they do in New York City because you go win like your Brooklyn championship mm -hmm. and then you go win New York City championship, but you're still not the state championship because you only play nobody in the New York State. So then they, right. the winner from the New York City goes plays the people in New York State. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know. It definitely. But uh, what uh, new stories are you working on, or uh, what you looking forward into this upcoming season? If there is gonna be a season, I, mean, well, I, I told myself I'm, I want to cover um, football more because mm -hmm. you know that you got to be outside, and I don't really like cold elements. But I told myself I want to try to do cover football a little bit more, and. Like, I guess venture out and eventually do the podcast thing. But like I said, I really want to stay old school. But get into football more and venture out and try to do to do the podcast thing and see I, how that works for me. I feel like you do podcasts. It's gonna be crazy because you bring in in a lot of old like history. You yeah. putting people on history. A lot of people ain't well, and you doing all sports. So right. you you gonna you catching the net just so right. many. Yeah. Well, you maybe know, we probably can get you to kind of put your eyes on some of those ideas just to see what it, you know what it'd be like to kind of walk them into the podcast. I know you got more information, so I'm gonna be picking your brain with that, and then we'll try to take it from that situation. But um, now the old school stuff need to be heard though. Nah, it do. And that, for real, man, like him with old school guys like Ryan Whitaker, NFL success. He's been around the offices of the world, Mike Evans of the world. He's even talk about guys that can really play like PD Sessions. Like I've yeah. heard a lot of stories about the nineties where he's told me. What's what I'm gonna tell you what's really funny is like <laughs> I, did, I did a little blog on um you familiar with Carl Lawson? Mm hmm Carl Lawson played at Tennessee. And I remember Carl Lawson. Uh, she um was an ESPN female reporter, now she's a um assistant basketball coach with the Boston Celtics. Okay. But a lot of people didn't know that she played high school basketball in um, Northern Virginia. She's from Virginia. A lot of people didn't know that. So I blogged about her. I got a lot of like, yo, I never knew she was from Virginia. <laughs> so I'm like the, the feedback I like when I get see stuff like that, that's letting me know that what I'm doing is, you know what I'm saying, serving its purpose. Yeah, for sure. Because yeah. a lot of people don't know the history uh Virginia sports around here, like they don't. Charles Haley's from Virginia. They play for the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that Charles Haley's from Virginia. Carl, um, Carl Lawson. I mean, and like I said, I'm a little older than you guys, but it's like I'm a sports junkie, so it's like I paid attention to a lot of stuff. Like I got a friend now, like he can tell you, like I can tell you what type of shoes you had on when we was in elementary school. Like that's how you know what I'm saying. I mean. I'm paying attention to detail. Uh -huh. you see so what, what, what was the shoes that y'all wore when y'all was playing? Well, when I um, when I played, I played. Good um, one. Like that. <laughs> yeah, I like the. Um, I actually just posted. Somebody um, sent me a picture, and we had the um, <laughs> the old Barclays on as the team shoe. Mm. Those babies were us first. That's we hard. played in the, um, my junior year. We played in the, when Kobe was with Adidas. We played mm -hmm. in the Kobe's. Yeah, that was my, my that was my shoe. Yeah, yeah. That was my shoe. Uh, yeah. My senior. Yeah. And crazy eights, don't they? So yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Your coach is a big, he big on, he's big on like certain sneakers too. We, we're a fan of the, the Webbers and, and the Pinga Hot Joints. Yeah. Like fan of five joints. Yeah. 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 I, 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 yeah. I, 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 like when I go to these high school games, I pay attention to what the kids are hooping in, but they <laughs> like this loud stuff, man. So it's like. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is to be seen, man. Yeah. man. <laughs> Everything is to be seen. Like if they not being seen, yeah. they, they feel, I don't know. I, I, I'm assuming, cause I'm not one of them, so I'm not gonna say, right. you know what I'm saying, but everything is- It's, it's, right it's, it's self-explanatory, man. <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, self um, like um, I had Mike Holliman, he played with me on my uh, Tallwood team. He went to, uh, he was trying to go to um, play pro basketball, mm -hmm. and he went with Mike Anderson, that was his real good friend. And you know, Mike was a yeah, guy, Mike went to uh, BCU, BCU, you know what I'm saying? Work. So. They the went to these, in the first round. So they went to these uh combines or whatever trying to get on the team and the dude was like the dude agent was like, Mike, nobody know you. He was like, Wear a pink headband and you know Mike got ups and he was like, Everything you do, make sure you dump the ball and Mike got a pink headband on. That's how he played the whole every combine. He got 
he eventually had got a pro deal to play overseas because of that. Yeah, you got to be seen. Yeah, that's a lot of You got to be seen. That's what the young boys doing. But we 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 kind of old school. We like the Penny Hardaways. Yeah, yeah. You know, me and him watched a lot in the last. Day for this situation. Yeah, I appreciate this. But yeah, it's, the basketball is different now, and I know you can attest to that too. Like mm -hmm. from when you play, because like I actually used to go watch. Um, because you said you played with Derby fans. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go watch him play when he was in high school. They had a pretty good team. Yeah, yeah. We, we was all right. We was, we was, we was good. Definitely uh, the best team in the beach, for sure. Yeah, y'all <laughs> beat, beat, beat a lot of good teams. You beat Duke Cruz. Uh -huh. You beat, um, you guys beat uh, the Booker T team. You guys won against uh, Scotty Runnels, which was pretty much the Big East College Player of the Year. You won the College Player of the Year. You won against a madman. You see, my thing is like, well, what you're doing, like, how many people actually know that you play basketball? Well, actually know you play basketball for tall with high school. So my whole thing is like, okay, you did this podcast with me. I get some info on you. Mm -hmm. I come back and blog about it. Did you know that the guy that fit videos does the videos for seven cities actually play high school basketball mm -hmm. at Tallwood? And if you play college basketball, a lot of people don't know that. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So like, that's that's the stuff that I like. You know what I'm saying? Just giving people informative information. Facts, facts. No, I, I, that's, I, no, that's, I, I, that's, I rock to it. That's pretty yeah. much what it is, man. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, 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 I appreciate this, though. I rock with it. We're just going to sign. we signing off with that situation. Just sharing information. There's going to be some more stuff to, to come nah, in the future, though. We I think we're going to put our minds together to get this done. No, nah, facts. For sure. For <laughs> sure. But, yeah, I definitely appreciate y'all coming. You know what I'm saying? Definitely uh, bringing awareness to disease and everything. And, you know, more blessings to your, uh, your uh, Hendrick Sports. Appreciate it.